When I first met Ryan Coffey in the early 2000s uh, at Campbellsville University, this, this young man from LaRue County, I could tell that he had a spark in his eye and a, and a work ethic and a desire to, to serve the Lord. And I sized him up pretty early. I, I just knew that he probably had the gift of evangelism because usually people with that gift want to just cut to the chase. And the chase for them is winning people to Jesus Christ. Amen? And so today is very fitting as he baptized three. Uh, we've seen it in Ryan all along. It's, I'm not surprised at all that uh, for every church that he has served from the time that he left Campbellsville, uh, he's a two-time graduate of Campbellsville with a Master of Theology and a, an undergrad from the School of Theology. I'm not surprised at all that Everywhere he's been, he's added to every church that he served. And so today we, we gather to celebrate eight years of uh, incredible ministry here at First Baptist Church uh, of London, Kentucky by Ryan and Holly. Let's give the Lord a hand. Would y'all do that? But as... As Ryan had shared with me a little along the way about First Baptist Church of Russell Springs, it's, he found himself, uh, he and Holly, at that point of this step of faith that we're talking about today. And you weigh all the information and uh, you hear all the voices of, of go and no and whoa, why don't you wait? But then ultimately you have to just make that decision and usually in every decision to follow the Lord at that level or at any level it means you have to feel some release from where you've come from to what you're going to and it is scary business because you've never quite ever put your foot on that place before you're not quite sure how it is all going to work out until you get there but you know that it's a decision that if you're going to follow the Lord, you must make. And it's no different for any of us. I would say about Ryan and Holly going to First Baptist Church, Russell Springs, which uh, uh, I had really nothing to do except to, to pray as they, they sought that out. It's, it's going to be exciting for me because I get, her, get them closer to Campbellsville University. And so we're, we're certainly excited about that and the great church that First Russell Springs is. But using this day as an example to crisis of belief and a defining moment, am I going to walk or are we going to walk by faith or are we always going to walk by sight? Are we going to be influenced by the last person that we talked to in terms of making decisions? Or is the last person that we talk to going to be the Lord? Well, I use the text today from Bartimaeus because it's, it pretty much, in my opinion, uh, sums up this crisis of belief, this defining moment, this crossroads that we find ourselves at in life, many of us at different times. And as the, you heard the text read so beautifully, Bartimaeus had, he had this chance. And even though he couldn't see physically, his spiritual vision was 2020, Because he knew, he knew that Jesus was coming by. And Jesus comes by in our lives at times at these defining moments. But a lot of times he's the last one that we listen to, that these other voices drown out the decision that we need to make. And so Bartimaeus was there, as you heard the scripture read, and there were voices around him telling him to shut up and telling him, don't you know, to keep your place and gave him every reason not to. But even though he could not see physically, he could see spiritually. And I would say today for across this room that many of us can see physically. And our eyesight, our eyesight is good. But we don't see many times spiritually. 
and we're not able to have that spiritual 2020 vision in trusting in the Lord. I would ask you today, I would ask you today as we talk about crisis of belief and use as the example of Bartimaeus, when you followed the Lord completely in any decision that you've made, did you ever regret it? It was anxious at the moment. You were going to have to let go of some things to move forward. But even though there were voices saying, whoa or no, you decided, you decided, I really believe that this is God's will and that he has a plan, he has a plan in the future for me. And if I don't step out and step in to the will of God, I will never be able to fulfill my destiny as a person. When I get to this point, if, if, if whether whatever area that it is, if I get to this point and I'm always scared to move forward, if I'm always, if I'm always so reluctant to leave things that I know for things that I don't know, then I know that I will never experience the fullness of God's blessings for me. I could say to you without reservation today that God's never led me to a place that wasn't good for me and my family. Now, I didn't see it at the time. And to be real honest about Ted Taylor, I followed him a lot kicking and screaming and whining and complaining. But I was willing, I was, not all the times, but I was willing to follow him to a place that I'd never been before. And when I got there, I was so glad that I did. I just think today, as we think about these defining moments, some of you have sat on the edge in your life as you've, uh, on this incredible journey of life that God's brought you and he brings you, he brings you to this point and you get closer and closer and closer and you get to the edge and all of your life you've gotten cold feet. If you couldn't see it, if you couldn't see it, you would never step into it. If you didn't have 100% agreement with the folks around you, there's no way that you would step. But I want you to know today from the example of Bartimaeus that sometimes in God's plan of things, that over and over we have to walk by faith and not by sight. Wonder what your life would have been would be like today if you would have never stepped out in faith and accepted Jesus. Wonder where you would be today. Wonder where you would have been what you would have been doing. Wonder how it affected your family if you would have never had the courage to take that step of faith towards Jesus. Wonder how your life would have been different. You know, the Bible says that in several instances there, that when Jesus came by, the people just walked away. And I always wonder at these defining moments, at these critical times, that we hear those stories of people that stepped into their faith and, and moved forward and how God blessed them. But we really never hear about those who didn't. Matter of fact, in the Scriptures... As we, look, as we think about Jesus' encounter with a rich young ruler, he was rich, he was young, and he wanted power, had power. He walked away. He encountered Jesus at this defining moment, and he wasn't willing, he wasn't willing to give the things that he valued the most, which was his money and his resources, his youthful endeavors, his ability to be known as a name, he wasn't willing to surrender those to Christ. You know, it's interesting that in his defining moment, rather than to step in, he stepped back. We never know his name. We never know what happens to him as a result of him not walking by faith, but by sight. 
I would guess and I would venture that there's a pretty good reason that we don't know we don't know his name. Is because is because he chose to step back rather than step in. I think in John 6 about those disciples that when Jesus began to ask them for more and more in discipleship, that you'll have to leave your father and mother and you'll have to, you'll have to uh, st- step in and you'll have to deny yourself and take up your cross. And John 6, 60 through 72 says that when, when the going got tough, many of the tough got going. And it's estimated of those 72 disciples that were sent out, that probably 70 of them, at our best guess, left Jesus. They got to this defining moment. It was fish or cut bait. And rather than step in to follow Jesus, hook, line, and sinker, and to drive a stake in the ground and follow him, they said, no, it's it's too hard. And they began to step back. And you know, I would report to you today that we never heard from them again. We never knew their names. And we never heard from them again. They had their chance. They chose what was easy over what was best. It's said in 2 Timothy that in the last days, 2 Timothy 3, that Believers will fall away from the Lord. I would say to you that probably in the last days, that's not the time to fall away from the Lord. Amen? But one, one characteristic of the last days is that people will fall away. They'll fall away from their church commitment. They'll fall away from the Lord. And rather than stepping in and being all in, they step back. I also would remind you as we think about defining moments is the life of Judas. We do know his name. He must have been very, very stable as a person or Jesus would have not called him initially into the disciples. But people change. Their attitudes change. Their mindset changes. And for one part of his life, he was stepping in. But then when sin entered into his life, he began to step back. And this committed disciple and follower of Jesus stepped so far back that he sold Christ out for 30 pieces of silver. And we do know how it ends for Judas. Rather than being this inner circle of Jesus... The Bible records that he committed suicide because when he stepped back rather than stepping in, it cost him his life. We do know about Pilate. As I close, that Pilate tried to shift the death of Jesus off to anybody and everybody. He did not want to make that final decision to crucify Christ. He was a politician, but yet it rested on him, and he made the decision. And we know from tradition and from history that because of Pilate, we knew his name, he committed suicide because he couldn't deal with the thought of killing who he later found out to be was the savior of the world. So, in conclusion, from the example of Bartimaeus, he hollered out for Jesus. He could see possibilities, and he could see spiritually, even though he couldn't see physically. Even against voices that said, would you please be quiet? But, oh, was Bartimaeus pleased when his voice to the Lord was heard. Because the Bible records that because of him yelling out to Jesus when he went by that Jesus said, come here. Not only will you be able to walk by faith, but you will also be able to walk by sight. Join in and follow me. Amen.
Don't let Jesus come by at this moment and you get cold feet. Don't let Jesus come by at this moment and you listen to those voices out there. But listen to His voice. As I think about major spiritual decisions for all of us, it was the day that we gave our lives to Jesus. It was the day as these three young men have shown us by example that we went public and were baptized and were able to say to our community of faith that we're not ashamed of Jesus and we're not ashamed of the gospel. It was that day, maybe 20 years into our faith, when we finally figured out what our purpose was and what God created us to be. And that if we did anything out of that God-given purpose, that we would never be pleased. We would never, never have joy. It was that day when we walked by faith that we decided, after finding our purpose and our calling, that we drove a stake down. If not literally, symbolically, and we drove a stake down and said, I'm all in. I'm going to follow Jesus until the day that I die. And then the last defining moment, of course, is when, as Wallace Black has experienced here in our church, that the moment that you quit having life in your body, and breath in your lungs, and blood through your veins, you're in the arms of Jesus. What a defining moment, amen? I challenge you today in the name of Jesus. When you're faced with crosses of faith, to walk by faith and not by sight. Let's pray. Father God, as we close our worship time here, there are many in this room, I'm fully aware, that are at a defining moment. They're experiencing a crisis of belief. They've been praying that you would enlarge their territory, that, that for the greatness that you created in them, that they were willing to throw caution to the wind and chase that. They were willing to make adjustments in their life to follow you, whatever that meant. But yet today they find themselves right there at that brink. And Lord, remind us today that what we do at those brinks, at those moments, at that edge, determines our future and our destiny. If we go back because we're scared, we'll miss the opportunity that Bartimaeus took advantage of. If we listen to people over people's voices, over your voice, we will not get the direction that we need. So, Lord, in this room today, as we close this service and before our celebration for Ryan and Holly and their family, I just extend an invitation to a person that's been putting off a decision to follow you. They know they need to, but they just get to that point and they just can't do it. Remind us today that today might be the last chance, the last opportunity. I know Satan tells us over and over, well, we can do it later. But most of the time, later never comes. We never hear anything more about those examples in the Bible. Once they said no to Jesus, their opportunity was gone. Lord, I pray for the person today that there's uncertainty all around. And that they would listen to your voice rather than the voices of people. And so, Lord, this invitation time is yours. It's a special moment where you invite us to join you in what you're doing. And I pray your Holy Spirit would fall in this place today and that people would be moved by the Spirit in their pew or at the luncheon or at the invitation time to be obedient to you as we walk by faith 
and not by sight. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, would you please stand?